That Colossians 3 really teaches us how to live that way. And if you want to read it tonight when you go home, you can, but we'll read it tomorrow. <laughs> it's only fair. I just taught you what we're called to. We need to teach you how to get there. It's real easy. You get alone in a room and you recognize the things that you weren't created for and you put them off in prayer. And you begin to understand that you weren't created for anger and frustration and the need to be right. And you weren't created to just need to be whatever you were created to be like him. So you put off the lies that used to drive us. You put off all that wisdom that seems right. And then you begin to put on his nature and his image, which is listed right there in Colossians 3. His tender mercies, his, his loving kindness. If you have a complaint against another, it doesn't say file it. It says, as he forgave you, you forgive. It says, above all things, put on love. It's the bond of perfection. So a simple example, when you go home tonight, how to respond to the message. When you get alone with God tonight, take time and get alone with him. And say something like this. Wow, Father, you made me for your image from the beginning. I have a created value. There's a purpose and an intent on why I'm here. I'm not just a number in a vast sea. Man, you knew me before I was known. There's a time to be born, and here I am. Life comes from you. God, I don't want to live it the way I was taught it. I want to live it the way you created it. And I just put off everything of the flesh right now, the best I understand. My rights, my own will, my own desires apart from you. I just call it all dead. I just want that all gone in my life. And I just say I have no right to be anything less than what you've created me to be. God, I want to become love. You can start there tonight. And then you say, Father, I just thank you that the frustration and anger and selfishness is no longer a part of my life, but that you're filling me with your loving kindness, your tender mercy. You're taking this why behind my life and putting it so big in my heart that it starts bearing fruit on its own. God, to where I'm not trying to not be angry, I've lost my reason for it. I'm not trying to be okay. I have a reason to be okay. Thanks for fixing my eye, God, because the eye is the lamp of my body, and if I see clear... I am clear. You see how you can do that tonight when you go home? So take me serious on that because it's important. I want to do something quick before we pray for the sick. I want everybody to just close your eyes for a second. This isn't some altar call thing. I, I, don't, I wouldn't close your eyes. If you're in this room right now, everybody just don't be distracted. The best you can, don't look around, okay? If you have to tend to your children, I get that. But don't just look around. Everybody just be in their own comfortable place right now. And there's a reason. If you're in a marriage and you're sitting here and this word really, really got your heart. I would hope you didn't listen for your spouse. I hope you listened for you. Don't listen to a sermon for somebody else and say, I hope he's listening. I hope she's listening. No, I hope you listened. And if you did and you're sitting there and you're saying, man, you spoke to me tonight, Pastor. I've been complaining. I haven't been the best. I haven't been an example of Jesus. I've been blaming it on him, blaming it on her. But man, I don't want this anymore. But I feel like I've done damage. I feel like we ain't the same. If you'd be humble right now. Man, I'm telling you, I feel God's heart on this. If you'd be humble right now and you just slide your hand over. If your spouse is here. If your spouse isn't here, then you just make peace with God and say, man, I'm starting this life from here on out. But if your spouse is here, you watch what happens in your marriage if you'll do this. You slide your hand over. You get a hold of your spouse's hand. And please, if they take your hand, don't pull your hand away. I'm serious. That's not a joke. Don't pull your hand away. Just let them make this expression. Don't say a word. You don't even have to look at them. Just get their hand. And when you get their hand, here's what you're saying. Man, I heard this man tonight. And I'm done blaming you. And I'm done making excuses. And I'm sorry. Man, I haven't been pursuing right things. I haven't been believing right things. And I've been making a lot of excuses. I want you to know I'm hearing this man. And the best I understand, I'm sorry and I'm pursuing truth. Please forgive me. And I'm telling you, friend, if they took your hand tonight, please squeeze their hand back as if to say, Ditto, honey. I'm hearing this man too. I want to call it all dead. I want a fresh start with you. I, I want to move forward. We're going to put this behind us. Now, come on. You grab their hand right now and you be humble. And if you'd be humble, you squeeze their hand back. And Father, I ask for grace on every marriage that's responding. 
And I pray that you make all things new tonight. And I pray that it's impossible to go home and have it seem the same. I pray that you work such a humility in us, such a sorrow in us that's godly. That we begin to love one another, not despise one another. That there's no animosity, there's no unresolved conflict. That you yourself, by your great mercy, would make our homes different tonight because you've made us different. Lord God, I thank you for your grace that fixes things. Teach us to communicate. Teach us to start in a neutral, even playing field. A level of righteousness, God, where every mountain's down, every valley's up, where yesterday has no voice. Supernaturally, God, bring change into marriages. And I thank you for it. And empower them to walk out these convictions and let the homes and the children reap the blessing of a lifetime. God, I pray this grace on families right now. I'm telling you, there's people responding. That's a big deal. Those of you that don't understand or don't fit that description, thanks for your patience. You have no idea how huge this is. Probably, well, maybe you do. But I'm telling you, that's important. In Jesus' name, homes be healed. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to pray for the sick, God.